All right, let's go with questions, guys. Well, I know you got to have questions. Well, I was up at the command yesterday, first time I ever fished a few of the ice. Uh huh. And it's got, uh, it's probably got 18 inches of slush snow. Uh huh. It's dark under there. It's dark. Well, do you think there's going to be a deadly fish next year? Yeah, I think it will. I think it will because that, that lake is deep enough that those fish will all be out in that deep water suspended down there. So we were out there from uh, probably 2 o'clock till about 6. Mm -hmm. And I, I was doing just exactly what you said not to do. I was fishing on the bottom. It should have been up. And it got darker. I should have been right under the ice. Yep. You come up right close, guys. It's, I mean, you come up right close. The Vexilar units that you see those guys using, you know, you'll see that. In the, in the early part of the year, they'll be on the bottom, and then you'll see them, they'll all be up high. And it's just because that environment's become inhabitable to them. They have to push up. Perch can live in that, though. Perch can live in it. Trout can live in it. Yeah, they say if, if a trout goes too long at like four or five part per million, they become sterile. I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard that. We got, we got trout and perch, but we don't have to get one car. Yep, because they're suspenders by nature. By nature, they're suspenders. Yep. Yeah, try it. No, I'm serious. Just try going down right underneath the ice. It, it, a good rule is just go out there, you know, 15 poles. I know that's 30 feet. Jig. Come up a couple turns. Jig. Come up a couple turns. Jig. You know, if you know your reel brings in 21 inches a turn, you know, that's 42 inches. Okay, then I'm up, I'm up uh, 84 inches. I just came up 7 feet with 4 turns. Okay. Then you get a hit and you go, okay, now I know i got to go down, you know, 13 feet or 14 or whatever. And you do your pulls. Then you're fishing in that zone. Yep. yep, get the crappie up higher. Yeah, we <laughs> didn't get any. Because <laughs> there was a ground fog that was four foot off the ground, and you couldn't see nothing. Oh, yeah. It was just nasty cold. It, it socks into that valley there for sure. Yep. Other questions, guys? Oh, there's got to be something. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. When those fish suspend, you know, in the, in the, in the, over the deeper water. Right. No, the, the, they're out there. They'll suspend right around a the thermocline because the bigger fish, guys, that's something I always talk about in my other, other seminars, and I didn't really talk about it much here, but the bigger fish, you know, everybody looks at the, the pike and the bass and the crappie and the walleye is a warm water species. If you're going to catch the biggest ones, be it a walleye, pike, the success that we've had, and you've seen it on the show, I've had guys say, that you guys go out and catch big fish. Well, we've obviously put in a ton of time. But what you have to understand is that those bigger fish want to be in cooler water. It's just like, hey, the three of us, we're big guys, right? We go out in the summertime and we work, we get hot. Little Brandon's sitting over there, the guy that's working in my booth, you know what, 130 pounds soaking wet. I'm on the boat, in front of the boat in 100 degrees dying, I'm sweating. Not a bead of sweat running off of him. It's the same principle. The big guys, we get up early in the morning and get our work done. And then retreat to in front of the air conditioner, go to the basement in the heat of the day, correct? Same principle like people. It's the same principle like people. They're out there, it's cooler water. It's also deeper, right? So they're getting away from that light penetrating. They just sit out there and hang out because they fed early, moved back out. Now they're out there resting. Okay, it's like us retreating to the basement after we've worked all morning, ate a big breakfast, come in, kick our feet up. Same principle. You find those crop units suspended like that with your, with your fish finder. Yep, exactly. And, and a, a quick thing on that, guys, that, that's one thing I, I hate. I hate it when I go to a seminar and, and I hear guys, you know, I did that Angling Academy and we had 38 people in there and I did a big long thing about graphs. And people say, well, Seth, why don't you produce a video on graphs? Well, the problem is, is that I use the rants and maybe somebody else uses a Garmin and, you know, I don't know them all. I can only speak of what I know from my experience with my Lorantz. But here's the problem when guys go out and try to find suspended fish, be it a walleye fisherman, a trout fisherman, or whatever. Okay, you know the pixel ratings, guys, and I don't have my chart here, and I don't have this stuff all memorized, but this will make it sense to you. You know, you see something that's, you know, it's uh, 100 by 200 or 800, 600, or whatever, your pixels. Your vertical pixels is what you're looking at. If you've got 100 feet like this, okay, and there are people say, I don't see any fish. You know, I'm fishing for trout. I don't ever see any. I, I, I catch one every now and then, but I don't ever see them on there. Well, here's the problem. You know, you've got your zoom feature, two by four by zoom, right? You've got your range feature. That allows you to range in at a certain depth. When you have your graph, and I, don't quote me on this, but I, I'll be close. 
Say, say if you had a 100 pixel, and that's small, you're not even going to be able to buy one right now. What that is, is that's making one pixel responsible for probably six or seven inches area. Well, that's a lot of room to miss, right? The higher this vertical number is, that pixel is responsible for, for a smaller percentage, maybe three inches. If I take it up by two, now that pixel becomes responsible for an inch and a half. If I zoom it in by four, that pixel will now becomes responsible for half an inch. So now it's drawing a clearer picture because you're making that one pixel responsible for a smaller area. If I go out and I know I'm looking for crappie in the summertime and I'm going to try to get some suspended fish, I'll zoom it in by four. The first thing it's going to do is run you down to the bottom. If you're at 100 feet, this is probably going to look something like uh, 100, and it's going to say 70. Okay, a 30-foot window. I come over, I take my, my depth off of auto, my range off of auto, I go to manual, I run my up arrow up until this thing climbs up to where that window was 30 feet, now it says 10 and 40. Now I've made that pixel responsible for a half an inch in the zone I'm looking for. Because if you zoom it out, you're never going to see it. Okay? How a graph works, guys, is it, it's based off of when it hits a fish, it's hitting the swim bladder. The bigger the fish, the bigger the pocket of air, it's because of the swim bladder, the bigger the mark. It's not necessarily that the fish is big, it's based off that swim bladder. Kokanee have very tiny swim bladders, probably the hardest fish to find. Okay? The rest of them, it's bigger. My colored graph, when we're laker fishing, I can say, hey guys, that's, that's probably a you know, 15, 20 pound fish. Now that one's probably over 20. Because it makes a mark. That mark be it green, orange, yellow, red. Crappie come across on my graft is red. I pull up into a deep break, just like that break I showed you for the crappie. I pull up into that and I start seeing red down there. I know I'm on top of perch. All I gotta do is send it down. I know that's perch. I know that's lake trout. Okay, I know that's a, a bass because it's coming back to me as yellow. Okay, that's why the color graph's valuable to you. You'll learn to understand that as you use it more. But you have to make your pixel responsible for a smaller area. It's the only way you're going to see those fish. You split your screen, guys, if you think I'm lying. You split it, and this is going 100 feet over here, and you've got the 1040 here. You'll see this here, and you'll look over here and go, hey, he's right, there's nothing there. You just won't see it. The only time you're going to see it is when you're lake trout fishing. There's a big 20-pounder sitting down there. Okay. The other thing that you need to remember about locating fish, guys, and I don't want to get a tangent about grass, but it just it, it irritates me when somebody goes out and they spend all that money, six, seven, eight hundred, twenty-five hundred, whatever, on a graph, and that is my most valuable tool. Okay, when I'm fishing open water, when I'm fishing walleyes, that thing is just, it, I'm like this. And I'm like this one, I got two of them. Okay, this one's marking a fish. Yeah, that one's seen a fish down there. We're on a fish. I mean, I, that's how we find fish. We go to Priest Lake, you mark one big fish, drop down on top of that fish and catch it. Mark just one. That's how valuable a tool it is. When you go and you see one of the guys at the warehouse or wherever you buy that stuff at, and they have the simulators going, whoop, oh man, look at that. I wish I was fishing in that environment. Okay? That simulator's garbage. It's there to make you go, whoa. I want to see arches, Seth. Well, if you're sitting stagnant, like so, and a fish moves underneath your boat, depending on how fast that fish moves underneath your boat and comes into the cone, your arch may be like that, your arch may be like that, or your arch may just go like this. The arch is driven by how fast that fish enters the cone. The faster it comes in, it draws it up because it's coming in, correct? It draws it up, and he exits fast, he draws it down. That fish was moving through fast. We drove over that fish fast. This fish here, He's just coming in, swimming through real slow. When we're Laker fishing, Chad, right? The ones we catch, 
Look like that. That's Johnny Big Buddy, and he's sitting right below me. He's not moving at all. It's just drawing a solid line. Because he's sitting there. That's what you want. Okay? He ain't moving through. Chad, there's a good mark. Drop it down. <laughs> Boom. Fish. That's how valuable it is. Now, you may get an arch, guys, that looks like this. It's just all polka dotted. Like this. But what that means is that fish, when it entered in, stayed on the parameter of the cone. The ping hit it, didn't hit it. Ping hit it, didn't hit it. Didn't hit it. You hit it, didn't hit it. So it draws a broken picture. I don't want to see that because I know that fish is on my outskirts. Now I may be able to move. If I'm looking for a school, I can move a little bit to see if I can draw that picture better. But when you see that broken stuff, that fish is on the outside of you. Okay, He's just not quite in the cone yet. So this stuff is all seeing these big, beautiful arches, guys. That's just flying across a big group of stripers that graphs great and making that nice picture. That's what you see on your simulator. Okay. The other thing you can do with your graph, guys, and this is with lake trout fishing and stuff, if you get into that zone and you've got your 10 and your 40, okay, and you've got this thing going, and, you're, and you say, Chad and I are fishing, and we see this right here. Okay, we see that right there. And you start to drop, and you're dropping it down, you're counting it down in poles or whatever, you'll see this. Priest Lake, when the fish are going, you'll see this. This is cool. He's coming up to look. He's either seen it, or felt it coming down, and they go like this, and you come down and you hit your zone if you're doing pulls, or you hit the bottom, and you go doink, or just as you're dropping it, it just quits dropping, it's at the hook, or it hits the bottom, and doink, that fish is there. The Vexilar unit, the old flash graph, you know, nobody uses them anymore. You'll be jigging, boom, 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 and you'll see that fish down there, and all of a sudden that mark will just go and work right up to your jig or whatever you're using. It's raising up. That's an active fish. That's what we want to see. That's how valuable your graph is. All right, guys, any other questions? Why do you use uh, I use all gulp. Just all gulp. I use gulp stuff, yep. I, I, you know, live, great. I've used them before, but they're a pain in the butt to keep. I think it, yeah, exactly. Well, because of the the. Uh, um, yeah, but it's because of the. Come on, what is it, Chadley? That little aquatic invasive bugger, zebra mussel. Yeah, there's leeches in all this water. There's leeches in all this water. I think what they're concerned about is the transport, because you're getting water from somewhere else. And exactly. Yep, exactly. But the gold leeches, guys. I am a. Mega believer in gulp stuff. Use, use pieces of leech or use the whole thing? Use the whole thing. Whole thing. What size hook? Uh, using the size of one aught to uh, Namagatsu drop shot hook. Because you know, they got a big enough mouth. Just hook that, that fake leech has got a sucker on it. Just hook it right through there. You know, or those little two inch fish fries or the, the pearl off shad or the pearl watermelon bass minnows. I got the baits up here if you want to take a look. So, what's that? No, I just nose hook with the crappie. Yeah, I don't thread them on. 